Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 5c of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 141 and the question is 11. It reads, the diagram shows two particles of masses 20 and 13 kilograms connected by means of a light inextensible string passing over a smooth pulley. The angles with the horizontal are given by tan A is equal to 4 thirds, tan B is equal to 5 twelfths. Find the acceleration of the particles and the tension in each string initially when there is no friction and secondly when there is friction with a coefficient of one quarter. So this question first of all is a carbon copy of question 10 so this is why I'm doing it instead of 10 and also it's very similar to questions 9, 7, 6, 4 and 2. I've done all those and I've done them especially the first the first few questions in great detail so I'm absolutely going to fly through this. Uh, if, you, if you don't understand what I'm doing please look at the other videos first and if that doesn't work, absolutely put a comment in and I'll answer it for you. So look, I'm going to assume that at this stage you're, you're quite competent in resolving vectors and so on. So if we deal with our 20 kilogram mass first, I'm going to define my unit vectors uh, like this. Alright, that means my tensional vector is in the positive i and my normal vector is in the positive j. My weight vector goes this direction and if we resolve it, it's going to be negative j, negative i and the angle here is going to be equal to A. Alright, so I'm going to let you do that yourself and you're going to get an answer of negative 16G I hat, negative 12G J hat. Very straightforward stuff, stuff that you should be well able to do at this stage. So if we apply the same principles then to the 13 kilogram mass, this time the unit vectors are going to be like this. It's going to be negative T I hat, positive N1J, the weight vector is this way. If you want to resolve it, it's going to be negative, negative j but positive i. And the angle here is b. And where b, the tan, tan b is equal to 5 over 12. So once again, I'll let you do that for yourself. And you're going to get the weight vector is going to be equal to 5g i hat, negative 12g j hat. Alright? So I suppose that's the longest part of the question. Something that I don't need to do, I don't think, anymore. So now we're going to apply Newton's second law. So Newton's second law states, as we're well aware at this stage, that the sum of the force vectors is equal to the mass of a particle times the acceleration vectors. So let's apply that to the 20 kilogram mass here. So it's going to be equal to T i hat minus the weight vector, which is, or well, plus the weight vector, which is going to be negative 16 g i hat is equal to the mass which is 20 times the acceleration. So I'm going to say that it's accelerating in a positive a i hat direction here and a positive a i hat direction here. Noticing of course that these sets of unit vectors are different. I suppose I'm just being a bit lazy by not, by not actually saying they're different. But it doesn't matter. But this is going to be 20 a in the i hat direction. Similarly, if we do the same thing for the 13 kilogram mass Remember, your unit vectors were going kind of like this, so negative j but positive i for your weight. And it's just going to be equal to the weight vector, which is 5g i hat, negative t, uh, negative t i hat is equal to 13 a i hat. And like I said, these unit vectors are different. But because they're across the board, we can just get rid of the unit vectors, because we don't need those anymore. Alright, not however the acceleration. So that's pretty good stuff. Now what we need to do is to, we'll say, work out our acceleration vector and our um, tensional vector. And that's going to be pretty straightforward. So let's just move down here so we have a bit of room. We have two equations and we have two unknowns, which is what we need. So if I call this 1 and this 2, if I add 1 and 2, we'll get that the t's will cancel. So you're going to get negative 16g plus 5g is equal to 33a. So it's going to be 11g negative is equal to 33a. Therefore a is equal to negative g over 3 meters per second squared. Alright, so that's correct. The magnitude of that at least is correct. However, if you look back up to the top, we had already we have we've already given a direction to this vector. So we've got its magnitude, however we've we got its direction incorrect because we got a negative number. So it's actually going in the negative a i hat direction and the negative a i hat direction there. Which makes sense because look, the heavier mass is on the, the left, we'll say, as you look. 
All right. So the next part of the question says we are to work out all of that again, but this time with a coefficient of friction of 1 over 4. So we know that the frictional force is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction, where mu in this case is equal to 1 quarter. Now if you look, the, we'll say the j-hat component of the weight for both of these is equal to 12, so they're going to have the same, um, they're going to have the same uh, normal force. So in this case it's going to be fr is going to be 12, negative, or say 12g times a quarter is equal to 3g. So the magnitude of the frictional force at both times is equal to 3g. So I'm just going to note this down here just one moment. Now, however, we had set up our equations 1 and 2 saying that the acceleration was going in a positive i and a positive i. That's incorrect. So we've, we've worked out that it's actually going as I've now, as I've now drawn it. So let's just, uh, we'll say, rejig these equations. So it's going to be negative t, or no, it won't be negative t, it'll still be positive t, but it'll be a negative 20 ai, and it's going to be a negative 13, like that. How does that affect the frictional force? That means the frictional force is going to be going this way and this way. So the frictional force in both cases is going to be a positive I. Okay? So let's just add these in. So it's a positive I. So let me see now. So 5G plus 3G, like that. That's the friction force. So it's going to be T plus 3G. There. So that's us adding in the frictional forces because the frictional forces are going in the positive I direction for both um, for both equations. So let's once again solve it by adding 1 plus 2. The tensional forces cancel out and we're going to get 3g minus 16g plus 5g plus 3g is equal to negative 33a. So 3 and 3 is 6, 5 is 11, from 16 is minus 5 is it minus 5? Um, I'm actually going to do this on a calculator, believe it or not. I feel kind of tired at the moment. So 3 minus 16 plus 5 plus 3. Yeah, so it's negative 5g is equal to negative 33a. Therefore, a is equal to 5g over 33. All right, and I can tell you that that is correct. So and we know we got a positive number which means the direction which we, we said it was going is also correct. So that's pretty straightforward. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.